Hey everyone, I'm Sean and I healed myself of leaky gut and insulin resistance. In this video, I will go over nine proven things that you can do today that will help you get your insulin resistance under control. The ultimate goal is to become more insulin sensitive so that you don't experience more blood sugar spikes, energy crashes, and other negative symptoms after you eat food. Personally, in my own journey, I've tried many things, many diets, and what I'm going to share with you in this video are things that really worked for me and can work for anyone. Basically, I've done a lot of the hard work so you don't have to. All right, let's get into it. The nine things are walking, apple cider vinegar, collagen, elimination of sugar drinks and fried foods from your diet, strengthening your liver, reducing stress, swimming in the ocean, strength training, and fasting. I will leave timestamps in the description if you want to jump around. First, we have taking walks. Taking walks regularly is an easy thing to add to your routine. You can take walks in the morning, before or after workouts, after big meals, or at night before you go to sleep. Studies show that taking walks is a great way to reduce blood sugar after a meal. It's also a great way to reduce stress and to help with sleep. Anyone with blood sugar problems, insulin resistance, diabetes knows the value of good sleep. A lot of times it's hard to get deep, restful sleep when you have blood sugar problems. So you can make it fun by listening to music, listening to a podcast, taking a walk with friends or loved ones. Personally, I've got a great park near my house and I love going on walks in nature and taking hikes. The next thing you can do is to consume apple cider vinegar. Apple cider vinegar helps a lot with digestion and regulating blood sugar, particularly after a meal. Again, I love this one because it's so easy to implement into your daily routine. Just buy one bottle of apple cider vinegar, take a teaspoon of it, and put it in a glass of water, drink it during or after meals. I like to use a metal straw to drink it since apple cider vinegar is quite acidic. Apple cider vinegar has tons of other benefits too, like weight loss, strengthening your hair, and as I mentioned before, digestion. It's a cheap and easy way to keep your blood sugar at healthy levels during or after meals. The next thing is to get more collagen into your diet. Collagen is the building blocks of the tissues in our bodies. By consuming collagen regularly, you will heal your gut and other organs in your body. You may be asking, what does healing your gut have to do with blood sugar? Well, there is a direct connection between gut health and insulin resistance. Many studies have been done, which I will link below. Also personally, when I was really suffering from insulin resistance, I also noticed that my gut and digestion problems were getting worse as well. I've also heard from other people with insulin resistance that they have a lot of digestion problems. I really do believe that they go hand in hand. So by consuming collagen on a daily basis, especially on an empty stomach, you will notice a lot of benefits. First of all, your stomach and digestion will improve along with your hair and your skin. If you wanna watch a video on how to make delicious and nutritious chicken broth that's easy to digest and loaded with collagen, watch the video here that I made. Next, we have an obvious but important one. Stop drinking sugary drinks and fried foods. They destroy your gut, they're very bad for your liver, and they spike your blood sugar. Vegetable oil in particular is void of nutrients, but it's very cheap, which is why they use it in a lot of cheap fried foods. And I don't want you to confuse vegetable oil with fruit oils like olive oil, coconut oil, and avocado oil. These oils are very nutritious, good for you, they shouldn't cause you any problems. I'm talking about vegetable oils like canola oil and cooking oil. Avoid these. Most vegetable oils are highly processed and chemically treated. You don't want that stuff in your body. And with soda, we have, again, no nutrients and high fructose corn syrup. I can't think of a worse thing for a diabetic or someone with blood sugar problems to consume. So you need to get these foods, if you can even call them foods, out of your diet right now. The next thing you can do today is strengthen your liver. Our livers have over 500 functions in the body, including digestion of fructose, fat, and regulating glucose. By strengthening your liver, you are improving your body's ability to process glucose in a healthy way. 
A lot of diabetics or people suffering from insulin resistance have weak or fatty livers. So you want to strengthen your liver by consuming milk thistle and liver. Personally, I don't like the taste of liver, so I consume liver in supplement form. I take fermented cod liver oil, which is a whole food supplement. Ancestral supplements also have a really good liver supplement that you can take. It's just powdered liver. Definitely start taking one of these. Just remember that eating liver helps your liver. If you're diabetic or pre-diabetic, this is probably the most important thing you can do. Consume liver, strengthen your liver, and consume collagen. Those two things, probably the most important things you can do. If you forget everything for this video, remember those two things. As your liver becomes healthier, you'll notice so many benefits in your body, including better digestion, more stable blood sugar, easier time using the bathroom, definitely start taking liver. The next tip I have is to start handling your stress in a healthier way. It goes without saying that prolonged states of stress affect our bodies in a negative way. What do I mean exactly by stress though? Are there situations in your life that you just can't accept? Do you feel like you're always playing catch up? Is there a problem in your life that you feel hopeless about? This is what I mean when I say prolonged stress. Situations in our life just like this. We talked about taking walks earlier. Walks are a great way to reduce stress. Talking to good friends is also a great way. Sharing some laughs, watching a movie with friends, community in general. But the biggest game changer for me that really helped me to reduce my stress is regular journaling. There have been studies that prove that journaling regularly reduces stress. Just open a Microsoft Word file and start writing. Every morning or several times a week, write for 10 minutes without any rules, judgment, or filters. Get it all out. I promise it feels so good to get all that stuff out of my head and onto paper or onto a file. Journaling regularly will improve your life. The next tip I have is to swim in the ocean. Perhaps this isn't easy for someone to do today, but if you live near the ocean, it's great. The ocean is loaded with magnesium, potassium, selenium, and many other beneficial minerals for our bodies that can be absorbed through our skin. Also, the proportions of these minerals are really balanced in seawater. Studies have shown that swimming in the ocean regularly has been shown to have an anti-diabetic effect. Personally, when I was first healing from insulin resistance, I always felt better after swimming in the ocean. So if you don't live near the ocean, try to visit the beach maybe twice a year if you can. You'll feel a lot better after taking a dip in the sea. The next thing is strength training. Many people swear by strength training as a means of improving insulin resistance. Getting a kettlebell, joining the gym, or simply doing some squats is a great way to improve your insulin resistance. According to many studies, strength training helps your body to utilize the glucose in your blood as it makes your body more sensitive to insulin. Since muscles need a lot of energy during and after workouts, you're basically redirecting the glucose in your blood to your muscles. Strength training has a host of other benefits as well and is generally a good habit to have anyway. I really like kettlebell workouts and body weight training just because it's so convenient and I can do it in my house. Personally, convenience is a really important thing for me to keep up a habit regularly. The last tip I have for you guys is, if you haven't done so already, start doing intermittent fasting. I will explain it to you if you don't know what it is. In your 24 hour schedule, restrict eating to only eight hours. It's easy if you wake up at maybe eight, for example, have some water or tea, have lunch at 11, wait until maybe seven, and then have dinner at seven or before seven. That's eight hours right there. Don't eat before or after that. It's as simple as that. You can also do a one day fast by, for example, eating at 7 p.m. and then not eating until the next day at again, 7 p.m. Fasting and intermittent fasting have so many benefits and numerous studies tout the benefits for our bodies, including weight loss, improved focus, anti-aging, and positive effects on our blood sugar. So just simplify your schedule, eat at 11 a.m. and then 7 p.m. or 12 p.m. and 8 p.m. This is definitely something you can start doing today if you aren't already. All right, everyone, that's it. I really hope you found these tips to be helpful. 
please let me know any thoughts or questions you have down in the comments. Feel free to do any and all of these tips that I mentioned. They're all really helpful. Trust me. <laughs> please subscribe for more content from someone who has successfully healed themselves from leaky gut and insulin resistance. Once again, I'm Sean and I will see you in the next video. Bye.